Welcome back to ESA Summer Online. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fonden. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Kaspersky, Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. There was an incentive for this run for the secret boss and it has been met. So we're seeing a very special treat today. Now it's time for Solar Cell running Illusion of Gaia. Take it away. Thank you so much, sucker. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. I'm so sorry that it's so early in the morning for everybody. Welcome in. This is Illusion of Gaia. I'm your runner, SolarCell007. With me on comms, I have Psy990. Hello, everyone. All right. We are going to get started very shortly. I just want to talk a little bit about the category. It is 100%. And what that means is collecting all 50 red jewels in the game. And once we do that, we have a secret dungeon, a secret boss, and then, as Sucker said, we have the super secret apocalypse guy at the end of the game because the incentive was met so what's the important thing before we start is the third red jewel in the game we had to set up some rng and it's a little bit of a tight window to get there i am running on console but i do have safe states i'm just gonna let you know if we goof up we'll load the safe state and then try it again real quick instead of watching the intro again but let's go ahead and get started in three two one go all right, so we're going to start as Will in school right here. We're going to mash through this text. I said this third red jewel is super important. It's held by the fisherman down by the dock. Uh, he has three positions, and we're going to try to manipulate his position to be on the right side once we come out of Lance's house from getting the, uh, the second red jewel. So I'm going to be focused just a little bit as we start. I'm going to run up here. Grab this red jewel. Run down. I'm going to judge my position based off the lady that's down here when she's moving right. That should be good. I'm going to come out here. RNG's not moving. Run down the dock. Run to the right. Boom! Alright, rest of the run is free. I'll give it the sigh. Alright, yeah, let's make sure I can stay a little quiet there. He needs to... Pay close attention to everything that he was doing just now because any wrong move would have changed the RNG and would have moved that fisherman to a different spot. So now we're just talking with our friends here in the little cave. Will's going to show off his new psychic powers. First by moving that statue. The next by picking a card. You know, he has to pick the ace. And it doesn't matter which one, they're all the same. Somehow Will has changed all the cards to be the same. Now, it's gotten a little late, so we're going to head home. You know, it's close to dinner time. Will's getting a little hungry. So we're going to go to Grandma and Grandpa's. And we notice that there's this little piglet is trashing the place. You know, the real hero of the game. Good old Hamlet. We'll, uh, we'll lose track of Hamlet for a good chunk of the story. But he'll come back. And what a sweet, sweet moment it is. So now it's just a lot of text mashing. Not a whole lot going on here at the very beginning. We see Kara here getting uh, dragged away by the knights to go back home. I'm sorry, Sai. Who? Kara. Oh, Kara. Because that's the proper way to say it. <laughs> In any case, a lot of the Europeans, you might know this game as Illusion of Time. This is Illusion of Gaia. Uh, there are some differences between this version and the Japanese version. You'll see a lot of the text boxes in this game go by pretty fast. Like that. In the Japanese version, they're all slow text like this. Yeah, they're, they're like all this, this speed. So that's why we run the English version. There are a few glitches, and maybe Sai si can talk about those that are in the Japanese version compared to this one. And, and in this case, this is the only, probably one of the only times where the English version is harder than the Japanese version. Yep, yep. One of those being the herbs only refill 8 HP. In the Japanese version, it's a full heal. So map transitions... On speed run tech. Uh, you can actually choose your destination a little bit before it pops up on the screen, like half a second. So I'm going to be doing that as we go through the game. 
Also, to skip the zoom out and zoom in animation, you just hold start whenever you get to your destination. And that causes a fun little glitch in Angkor Wat when you get to the, reach the top. Yeah. Good position here. So we're come to the castle. We talk to Kara for a quick moment. Really quick, as you can see, we're just flying through the text boxes here. Need to remember to pick up this red jewel from this guard behind the pillar. Yeah, that's a real nasty jewel right there. Is if if you don't wait on that screen long enough, you don't see that guard go behind the pillar. And let's be honest, how many of us actually stopped him? And watch what that guard was doing when we were growing up playing this. Alright, so we're in jail. We're killing a little bit of time. Uh, Zucker, if there's anything you might want to read off, now would be a good time. That's fabulous. I have a donation from SO5Z, and he donates $10 saying, Hey, Sola, thanks for making Get Up Early on a Saturday. Since I'm up already, I'll have some healthy breakfast. I'll take three Sandfanger eggs, mummy side up, some Merkin style viper, 95 vampires, and one cycle of castor. I hope I didn't butcher that. Good luck on your run. And thank you very much for your generous donation. Please keep them coming. Yes, thank you, someone. Appreciate that. It's a great cause. Thank you to all the donators. It's been going, happening through this whole marathon. So in the prison, we learn our dad's a flute. He's, uh, he's speaking to us. The basic story is that you went to the Tower of Babel a year ago. And there was an incident. Your father never returned. We're on a hunt for your father. Also, Hamlet's back. Welcome back, Hamlet. Missed you, buddy. He braves the, the prison to bring us the key. That allows us to escape. Sorry. Sorry, Hamlet. We'll see you in a little bit. It'll be a while, but... Miss you, buddy. Alright, first dungeon in the game. We are just kind of showing off basic movement mechanics. Double tap to sprint a direction. Lovely little freak dash right there. Thank goodness we got it. Alright, Sai, so if you want to talk about the uh, animation cancel, that would be awesome. All right, we'll talk about the orb glitch and the free dashes, since we have time. What you saw him do there, you saw him run through a door that hadn't quite appeared yet. And what we call that is the orb cancel glitch. And you'll see him do it here. He'll go into his menu and he can run right through a barrier without having to wait for it to disappear. The way this game works is it loads map data whenever you, oh, then the spear got you. <laughs> RNG, please. Please move back. But if you go into your menu, as the destruction orb appears after killing an enemy, you can run through the barrier that it's supposed to destroy because the collision detection is no longer there. And you'll see him do it here after he kills this bat. He'll go into his menu, he'll equip Lova's Melody, and he goes right through. HP. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was really needed. That bat decided to be kind. Uh, free dashing. It's not something that is new, per se, but it's something that was always thought to be, uh, would you say, rather difficult to attempt because of how sure. tight the inputs are. What you're doing is you're attacking with will while running and then canceling the animation by using a diagonal input immediately after the attack. Yeah, so he might have to do it here with these enemies coming up. Oh, it gets lucky. No chance for it. But what it does is it allows Will to keep running straight through an enemy's iframes with and it allows us to traverse a little faster. And right here so we first see first dark space. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Sai. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the game has what's called dark spaces. Well, we skipped the first one in South Cape because you know, we don't really need to go in there, but Here's the second instance, and we get our first, you know, character transformation. We get the Dark Knight Free Dan. My Batman. <laughs> With his long flowing hair and awesome armor. And of course, you know, he's got to have a cape. So 
So the good use of Freedan is he's got one extra strength over Will. He also has this sword which can reach things you need to activate like that switch that increased the size of that bridge a little while ago. Alright, make the one cycle. We're going to pick up a few more red jewels before we're done with this dungeon. You can, and you can also see him attacking and running. And I, with Freedom, it's called the iframe dash. And it's, it's the same concept. You're attacking the enemy and going right back into a sprint to make it through the enemy's iframes so that we don't have to stop and kill the enemy. What drops a health orb at full HP? The run's gonna do something mean to me, I can feel it. Yeah, it's being too kind here in the beginning. Oh, and you get to jump. What he just did there is he attacked and then immediately jump attack to get just a little bit further, and we call that the lily skip. I mean, we're not really skipping her because we still have to go through the text, but it puts us closer to the door and allows us to exit faster. This game is refined down to tenths of sec. Well, few tenths of seconds for certain moves all over the place. It's, you take what you can get, for sure. It's quite optimized. And a lot of it hasn't been until, actually, this year we've dropped the time yes. even more. Especially with somebody ruining the game with higher level tech. <laughs> so, we're rescuing Kara from the castle, we're picking up some food for the journey, and then we're gonna head out. Yes, our yummy roast leg of yak. And now we're worried about our grandparents, so we're going to go home and check on them. You know, make sure they're okay. Grandpa Bill and Grandma Lola. Grandpa Bill being lucky he didn't get in my way when I was trying to run around him earlier. Yeah, he decided to be a good lad. We arrived to see that the house is a mess. We've had a bounty hunter sent after us. The Jackal. Oh my gosh, must not hum in front of everybody. Hey. Must not tap controller in front of everybody. So here we're gonna see the clean expertise that is Kara and Lily, you know, we, we walk out, go right back in the house, and it's like if nothing was ever touched. You know, if only we could hire them to clean our own houses. So now, All right, so. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Lily is offering us safe haven in Itori Village. It's her home village, but it's kind of hidden from the outside world. You play Lola's Melody, which Grandma Lola gave us at the beginning of the game. All of a sudden, we can see the village. We'll pick up another red jewel. Will's first ability here, and Inca Statue A, one of the two Inca Statues we need to go through the entirety of the first dungeon in the game. The first major dungeon, I should say. So I'm going to grab this red jewel from the log pile off to the left, and then I'm going to run into this house to skip their walking animation because it takes longer otherwise. And we see Grandma Lola, Grandpa Bill, safe and sound. And what you don't get to see in the speedrun is how they escaped. And what Grandma Lola did was offered their captors some poisoned marsupial pie. Yeah, I can still remember that. I'm glad you remember that. <laughs> So yes, this is Will's first move, the Psycho Dash. Basically just slam ourselves in the walls, and if they can break, they'll break open. They'll become entrances into other rooms for us. And we're going to use that coming up pretty soon in this uh, town. But if we have any donations we could read off, now would be a great time. And we do have one. We have a $30 donation from MPK Bamsey saying... Thank you for participating in this event, my friend. I've had multiple family members affected by this disease, and it means a lot to me. Love you, have fun, heart emoji. Aw, thank you very much. And indeed, it is a very good cause. 
all the money we are raising is going to Alzheimer Funden, the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia related diseases. I cannot stress this enough. It's a very good cause and all your money is going 100% to this fund to help a scientist um, discover a cure or medicaments to, to help people with this disease. So please keep those donations coming. Yeah, thank you so much, Bamsey. Love you too, man. All right, Moon Tribe. First chance to get super embarrassed in front of everyone. I see a 10 coming in. Six worms, 20 seconds. Reputation on the line. <laughs> So you see what he did there at the beginning, he charged up a Psycho Dash, it helps clear up the first couple of worms, and then he's just going to make quick work of the last few. Yeah, you got an 8, that's not bad, I'd take an 8. Yeah, we'll take that. Alright, so that's Inca Statue B. We're good to head on over to the Inca Ruins, first main dungeon of the game. It's also the first chance for us to have a little bit of a sequence break. Usually there is a longer section of the dungeon where we need to pick up Freedan for his sword to destroy an enemy that opens up a path for us. But doing a little bit of movement tech and attack tech, we can actually defeat that enemy and open up the way a little early. We'll share that off. Yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll explain just a little bit before it happens. Uh, when you're running with Will and you attack, Will's attack is actually just slightly you know, longer than normal. And that is just enough to allow us to reach the enemy that is normally blocked unless you have free Dan. So right here he's going to charge up a, a Psycho Dash as he enters the dungeon. And what he's going to do is he's going to kill this four-way on the left. And he's doing that to prep the room for when he comes back. You'll see he's going to charge up another Psycho Dash to kill one more four-way and that opens up some stairs. So on his way back, it's a little shorter distance. Just doing everything you can to shorten the route, and you know, because you know you gotta go fast. So with 100% over any percent, inventory management becomes an actual thing you have to deal with. So it's a lot of memorizing where items are supposed to be in their slots, so you don't spend as much time in your inventory. Oh, blocks. RNG, please. Also, I had to knock. I had to finish that. It's driving me nuts. Yeah, those tiles fall down. They're a little randomized, so I had to wait a little bit there. All right, here comes the sequence break. Like I was saying earlier, he's going to run and attack, and you can see he will just reaches this uh, golden statue. You'll see there again, he did the orb cancel glitch, went into his menu while the destruction orb was up, and then you saw him do what is called the ramp glitch. If you jump attack while at the bottom of the ramp, it actually gives you the momentum as if you were at the top and allows you to, of course, you know, sail across the other side. Oh, that was a nice freak dash on that, uh, Flip slime. Flippin' slimes! Don't force me to freak dash in a marathon! Oh. He's- oh, he's gonna watch this VOD. I know it. I know he's gonna be so pleased with himself. Freak dash. we the person we're talking about is Mr. Free. He's the one that's come up with a lot of the higher level tech that you'll see. Oh, okay, we got good RNG on those slimes, so we didn't have to worry about it there. Now, in this room coming up, it's the last red jewel of the dungeon that we're going to get. I'm going to charge here. You can freak dash these worms back and forth, but it's a good chance I'll get hit. And with the boss that's coming up, I want as much HP as I can get. As in, I want full HP, because if I have anything less than full HP right now, I'm, it's a one-hit kill from the boss. So yeah. We'll go into this dark space to turn in the free Dan. Uh, normally, you would need the wind melody from this dungeon, that's another thing that we skipped. But you don't need that for the tile, it's just not illuminated when you're standing on it. So we'll take free Dan, we'll stand on the tile and open the way. And you also notice that 
you know, Solar isn't killing the enemies and gaining the stat upgrades like you normally would in a playthrough. The thing with the mechanic with this game, or the gimmick, I could say, is after you kill each boss, you gain all the stats that you missed out on. So the reason why he's saying he wants to be at full health is because right now he is super squishy. One hit from Castoth will do 7 HP of damage, so anything less than full health and he will die in one shot. And I will be quiet now because he's going to need to focus on his attack pattern to hopefully get a one cycle here. Hopefully get a one cycle. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Alright, no one cycle. Rushed it. He gave me the good RNG too. Alright. Oh, I did give Four you the good RNG. 4 HP left. He's gonna run away. He's being mean. It's okay though. Just rushed it. Did you Kill cast off in one cycle. It's pretty hard. You need really precise inputs. Uh, there's a little bit of leeway, depending on when your first sword strike lands, but it's pretty tight. And you have to be a little hulk to get it consistently <laughs> during a marathon. <laughs> yeah, you normally want, you know, the end of your attack to meet up with the very first frame of. Cast off vulnerability, and then it's a perfect rhythm to get the one cycle. So, thinking gold ship, it's a little bit of a technical place. There's a lot of corners you can roll off on. It's a fun little area to run through. Oh my gosh, side, do not let me forget Seth's red jewel. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be a bad thing to forget. There are many, many red jewels in this game that are missable. Uh, we have safeties in place in case that happens, but again, don't want to embarrass myself in front of everybody. <laughs> Alright, so, neat little trick coming up. I'm gonna mess it up, Sai. I'm gonna mess it up. Uh, you got oh, this. I'm gonna jump down too early. I'm gonna jump down too early. I'm freaking out. It's over. It's over. Oh, he's gonna watch the VOD. So, you can actually jump down while the screen is just kind of changing the background. Saves you about three seconds, something like that. Uh, it's a tight input, though, to talk to the guy and hit down immediately after that. Very tight to do that. Uh, shout out to Mr. Free for recently finding out that you can buffer the B input to talk to that guy. So, it's not as dependent on placement as it usually was. Usually, we'd have to line up and visually check, okay, I'm one pixel away. We'll go ahead and uh, try it here. Yeah, we right, used to so have to use see. Will's hair to line up. Oh yeah, yeah. Here's another missable red jewel. Alright, and that's the Inca Gold ship. So Kara is gonna pick up a crystal ring here. Why was I not sprinting? The, uh, the gold ship's getting attacked by a giant fish called Riverson. Riverson, a little hungry, nommed on Seth, and so Seth is no more. As far as we can tell. And now we have the absolute worst section of the game. The raft scene. The raft scene. Very dependent on RNG. We did pick up one herb in the Inca ruins. Uh, and that's to kind of help us along here. A little RNG right here. That's not bad. So to progress to this scene, we need to hit a fish after Kara says something. So we didn't have to wait too long right there for a fish. Yeah, that was some good fish uh, RNG. I will take that. A couple scenes later, we're going to be down to 1 HP. We need to get the max HP by eating fish before we talk to Kara to progress the story. Uh, we have that herb to refill 8 HP. But we will rely on 4 fish coming across the screen. As you can tell, it's... RNG dependent. Some you'll see like one and then a pause. Sometimes you'll see a, there's two right there. Sometimes three. That's enough to complain about. Yeah, we'll see how uh, kind the game is to you. I'm 
absolutely ashamed of that menu. <laughs> Thought you were going for a red jewel. Alright, here we go. Fish RNG. Let's see what we get. I have never known sadness more oh. than I do right now in my life. <laughs> oh, man. It hurts. It hurt me deep, Sai. Oh, All I right, feel so the this pain. This is pretty garbage RNG. <laughs> Run's dead. It's over. Reset. We're done. Watch, right. watch there be a double as soon as she gets over there. Huh. <laughs> All right, so that ending right there, as soon as she gets in place, we just need to smack another fish. So that was okay. Yeah, but that double at the beginning. And while this whole rap scene is going on, there's a little bit of a romance budding between Will and Kara that you don't really get to you know, read in the speedrun. And then here we have some hungry sharks. It's all I hear in my head now. Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying too. Oh, it's in my mind. <laughs> You absolute monster. <laughs> Alright, now. All we've had is fish. We've had no vitamin C. Obviously, we're going to get scurvy. We collapse. Moving on. And then Will, being the awesome narrator that he is, narrates his own passing out. And right here, we get a little lesson in scurvy. Red jewel, red jewel, red jewel, red jewel, red jewel, red jewel, red jewel. And then he's saying red jewel because there is a red jewel to the pot right outside this house right there. And if you talk to Kara, you miss it. It's gone forever. You can no longer go back to the Diamond Coast. If you focus on one category, you're fine. But when you have any percent, 100 percent, don't bag Umi's true 100 percent. And the randomizer for Illusion of Gaia. That's right, folks. There's a randomizer for Illusion of Gaia. Look for it. IOGR.dev. Or IOGR.app. Sorry, that's the only plug. Forgive me, ESA. Anyway, it's a lot to keep in your mind, for sure. So I gotta remind myself where all the red jewels are. Alright, so uh, now would be a great time for a reading if we have one. Oh yeah, we do. We have a $50 donation from Queen and B saying, Nice juice, Sola and Sai. $50, hoping you do get all 50 red jewels. Keep up the good work and thank you for the run. Thank you for your generous donation. Next thank up, so much, Queenie. we have a $30 donation from Benicus saying, Good luck on the run, Sola. Hopefully, I can stay awake for Apugaya. <laughs> And we have a $10 donation from Peppercrab saying, Hey Sola, good luck on the run. Thanks to everyone at ESA for putting on this event for a great cause. Thank you very much for your donation. I have another donation, but this one will take a little longer. So do we have a little time for that? Or would it be better to wait a little? Go ahead and read it. <laughs> Alrighty then. It's a $25 donation from Scarfish saying, Did you know the word egg in Japanese? I learned it long time ago. And since then, I've scrambled for new ways to use them and acquired Hollandaise worth. But seeing you've been addicted to Illusion of Gaia lately, it makes me glad to see the Dark Friar put to good use. Just remember to look at the sunny side of things and take them over easy. Cat start is easy, just beat him with proper tempo. I have faith you'll come and clutch with Wiper and hatch a good plan for the vampires. With any luck, you'll poach a lot of Sandfanger's children and try not to crack during Mama Queen's fight. Once you boil it down, you just gotta play safe. I know you can make Dark Gaia's face runny. Before we all know it, it will be over. I expect you to blow us all out of the water. Now I'ma let you back to your run so you can whip your PB and may your time rival a new world record. Thank you very much for the donation and I hope I didn't butcher it too much. 
You know, the only person I'm angry at is you, sucker. <laughs> you read that out loud. <laughs> the uh, the community knows puns just... Ooh, puns. <laughs> they know how I feel about puns. Thank you, Scar. Yeah, thank you everyone for the donations. Yeah, very generous of all of you, for sure. Alright, so those are the only red jewels we're getting in this dungeon. The rest is just kind of surviving. Uh, this is the diamond mine. We're... Here to go rescue. Ooh, you mean old lizard! Rescue some laborers. And at the end, we'll be able to progress the story with another melody that we learn. But this is assuming I don't die along the way, and that was a very mean thing to happen. I should be charging here. So you're gonna see me. Go into my inventory when I'm canceling these animations, but I'm also getting rid of red jewels at the same time, so I don't have to go into my inventory extra times. It goes back to what Solar was talking about earlier about inventory management. As you can see, the red jewels will start to fill up the inventory. We don't have a lot of space. It's 16 slots in your inventory. So with 50 yep. red jewels and all the key items that you'll get, yeah, it fills up pretty quick. So while he's going in doing the orb cancel glitch, he'll grab a red jewel, send it off to the jeweler, just to help keep some open space. So here we're picking up Freedan's first move, Dark Friar. It's a missile-style attack that we'll upgrade as we go through the run. Uh, I'm down to 6 HP. It's a marathon. I'm gonna wuss out and charge it. It's just so I don't die coming out of uh, the screen right here. That's not a bad move. You know, you've got some pretty nasty enemies coming at you. You've got the the flazers, which are those you know giant lizard men, and of course the beholders if they decide to not turn to stone on you. So yeah, we use the dark fire for that worm to open up this passage to rescue this laborer. Now, in the Japanese version, you don't have to destroy that barrier. You can you can run around it and skip this and skip having to get Friar before coming up here. Although why I wouldn't know. I haven't seen the Japanese run to really understand that. All right. So we death warped right there. I think that's the first intentional death warp. It's quicker to, uh, we have, there's another half of this dungeon we have to do, and it's quicker to death warp and start from the beginning than it is to run all the way back from where we were. And Diamond Mine starts the, it's the first death warp in the game. Yeah. So we're going up an elevator to go further down into the mine, something like that, question mark, question mark. Yeah, we're not quite sure which direction we're going. Alright, scary room for the diamond mine. Taking it clean. And of course the beholder turns to stone on you. Oh, and then it gets a snipe on you too. You know, right there he's going to charge up a psycho dash. That way he can... Oh. Of course. Of Sorry, I'm not going to lie. This dungeon's being a little mean right now. Yeah, Diamond Mine can do that to you. Alright, four hits. So, I can safely take one Beholder hit and one Flazer hit. Let's hope we don't. Ooh, that was close. I'd rather get further in before I take damage, please. Thank you. There are certain what? spots where he will take intentional damage, and it's to make the Death Warp a lot faster. But for the marathon, I'm not interested in being a little risky right there. No sense. You got 8 HP, that's a good spot to be at. It would have taken three hits anyway. Alright, so now we have both mine keys, we can go into the center area. And we can talk to Sam again. Oh, and you got the setup, nice. So right now, Sam is teaching us the memory melody. 
Uh, what we didn't see in Phrygia is all of our friends are there, but one of them has amnesia. So we're learning the memory melody from Sam to help our friend regain his his memory, and get and we get to hear one of the my favorite track in the game. It's a goodie. Alright, back to Frieza. Before we play the melody, we do have one more red jewel we need to pick up before it's gone for good. Yes. Thank also you. need to remember to actually equip the melody. We gotta get the red jewel that's in the hotel that we did not go into. Yet. See, if you come here before going to the diamond mine, there's a whole scene with, with Lily. That you, of course, you know, you don't see in the speedrun where everyone meets and we see that Lance has lost his memory. But now we're going to play the memory melody for everyone and we see a flood of memories come back to not just Lance, but the other characters as well. Oh, and you got the run up on Eric. Nice. So yeah, honestly, Losing a Guy is a game of mashing. You do a couple runs back to back, you really start to feel it. Uh, so it's important to know you don't have to mash through all of this. If you know where the text is going to stop, you can just start mashing there. If I was any good at the game whatsoever, I wouldn't be seeing a little arrow pop up at the bottom. But uh, everyone has different mashing techniques. The, uh, the best mashing technique is to roll three buttons. Because um, you don't really gain anything by pressing two buttons at the same time. Uh, I'm more of a mash and hope you get something good. I know the Hulk and I think Mr. Freak, uh, they like to roll their buttons at much better text. Yeah, I'm the, the same as you. I, I mash the buttons. Okay, the Cousin Neil's Cottage. We need to get to the second dungeon of the game. He'll lead us there. Now, Neil's Cottage is one room. It's a short area. But it can be a pain if you're not really sure what you're... Uh, if you're not talking to what you're supposed to be talking to. So there's four inventions in here that you need to interact with. And there's... Be able to progress through there. There's the, the giant camera, the telescope, a, a tank of oxygen, and an airplane wing. The two that'll trip you up are the air tank and the airplane wing. Because the hitbox just doesn't quite agree. And you might end up inspecting the airplane wing two, maybe three times before you finally hit the air tank. Uh, are you, are you going to Are you going to thread it? I mean, I'm going to try to thread it. Alright, so we're at the, the, we're at Nazca, inspecting one of the drawings. We're going to talk to Kara, then Lily, then Kara again, and we're going to run down here, and we see one of the Moon Tribe. Oh. Eh. Yeah. So there's that space in between the characters right there. You can just run straight up. It's pixel perfect, and you kind of use one of the lines to line up, and... I just couldn't get the, uh, the pixel. You've got a little bit of time to adjust, but... Yeah, it's just... You can just run around. Oh, I never did mention the guard dash technique. Go for it. Alright, what you saw him doing there is he was still moving while guarding, and when Will guards, he's of course twirling his flute but if you if you dash do the uh, guard input and then immediately input uh, the direction that you're running he will continue to guard while while it looks like he's sliding across the ground and that's what's called guard dashing it's more of a swag move than anything there's a couple of spots where it can be of use other than that, it's real cool. 
I'm hitting all the free dashes. I don't know what to do. <laughs> So I took damage there twice on purpose. That means I'm going to take one hit to the death warp on this screen. So this dungeon revolves around getting four crystal balls to create the bridge that leads to the boss. Which hopefully won't kick my butt, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Viper's going to be Viper. Oh yeah. You know, Viper used to be okay. It used to be fun. And then Mr. Freed happened. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. You jinxed yourself. You have nobody to blame but yourself for that one. Of course. All right, so room two is actually the scariest of the four rooms, at least for me. Um, Wait there's for the uh, a little bit of a sketchy <laughs> section at the end. Oh yes, thanks for reminding me. You can actually soft lock in this room. Thanks, Sai. I'm sure it'll happen now. <laughs> Commentator's curse is a thing. Indeed it is. And what I was saying is, when you open a chest for key item, there's a fanfare that sounds. Well, when you go to grab the crystal ball here at the end of this room, there's a barrier that blocks the chest. If you move fast enough after you do the orb cancel glitch, you can grab that chest while the barrier is still being destroyed. And the game has no idea what to do, so it just soft locks you. And that has killed runs. <laughs> I've, I've had it happen to me. I know Solar said it happened to him. I don't know what you're talking about. Totally didn't happen during one of my practice runs for this. <laughs> but right here. We'll kill this. I, I call them golems. Let's see, does the orb cancel glitch? And what he's doing there, he's taking damage from those fire snakes while the barrier is being destroyed. You know, that way he doesn't grab the crystal ball too soon. And also it helps with the death warp. Now we're going to come down here, take a bonk from this worm, and we death warp right back to the entrance of this room. Okay, room three. Bit of a sequence break for just this room. Uh, the game wants you to really... Sorry thinking here it wants you to go around this room upside and underside lower these platforms and whatever but oh, we already had the crystal ball rooms done easy like that so for one tile ramps you can actually jump over them with will it's the same tech as the ramp glitch for a full-size ramp but since these ramps are only one tile will just hops over them like they're nothing so we're gonna pick up this red jewel and then death warp out Ooh. I can't breathe, Sai. <laughs> I was... can't breathe, Sai. <sighs> Calculated, Sai. That's all that was. We'll go with that. Sure. Please, Mr. Robot, be kind. He wasn't very kind, but luckily the ramp pushed you away. It saved you. Okay, so we're gonna run up here to spawn that fire snake in the top left corner. You might have missed it. We gotta run all the way around, changing to free Dan to do this room. Now, here's where the any percent and the hundred percent differ. In any percent, he would have changed into free Dan back in room three, but since he had to death warp, it changes to room four. We need Free Dan because we need Dark Friar to activate a statue to push the switch. So here he's gonna, he's gonna charge Friar. He's gonna take a bonk from that fire snake. Ain't no gonna got time to wait for that. So we're gonna activate that statue, pull it over to the switch, gets rid of that statue. Take a bonk for a death warp. And then a little bit of a manip manipulation here. Sword's gonna hit me and hit me. And that way I can get this crystal ball without having to move that statue. If I try to move down around that myself, unless I'm pixel perfect, I'll jump down and have to run all the way back around there. And we don't wanna do that. Oh my gosh, that was quick. 
Yeah, as long right, as time for got, Viper. As long as you've got iframes, you won't jump off of that little ledge there. But yes. All right, I will leave it to you for Viper. Uh, I don't wanna. Whatever, we're alive! Woo! Woo! Sucker, if you please, a donation. <laughs> of course, I have some. I have a $50 donation from Human Being saying, This perfectly normal human is glad to donate to any organization dedicated to the erasure of Alzheimer's. This 100% human, and totally not swarm of bees in human suit, has seen too many people suffer from this ailment. The rest of your fellow humans should donate as well, lest a swarm of angry bees is unleashed, unleashed upon you. Please think of the bees. Thank you for your generous donation. I have another $50 donation with no comment from Noster. Thank you very, very much for your generosity. And I have a $5 donation from Velar saying, Hello chat, Velar here, with a brief announcement by just doing my duty as a mod and inform everybody who have trouble donating because it's in a different language that you actually can change the language on the lower right of PayPal from Svenska to English. Also, please remember to stay hydrated every now and then with some tasty drinks of your choice. There are also still some incentives which wait to be met like Super Mario 64 70 stars randomizer by Simply. Please lean back and enjoy the rest of the run and marathon. Thank you very much for listening to this announcement and remember, stay cute, chat, as you always are. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. It's extremely generous. So this is Seaside Palace. There's uh, not too much to talk about dungeon-wise. So... That is one thing we haven't talked about yet, Sai. These red jewels, what the heck are we doing with them? I leave it to you. All right, there are 50 red jewels, and they're scattered all throughout the world. And we're sending them to a guy called the Jeweler's Gym, who is scouring the world for these gems, and we're helping him find them all. If you talk to him at any given point, he has a reward at so many jewels. Uh, so you, there's herbs, there's a defense jewel, there's a dark fryer upgrade, I believe there's an HP jewel as yep. well. And once we ha uh, find all 50 of these jewels, he will send us to the secret dungeon. Oh, and here we see Lily invading the vampire's personal coffin. To get the purification stone. Now, if you looked at my inventory, you saw, hey, Solar, your inventory is pretty full. And it is. We're, uh, we're coming up relatively soon on a chance when we can actually talk to Gem the Jeweler. Uh, but I am going to have to go out of my way into my inventory once in this dungeon to clear out a spot. We'll go through the next main dungeon, Mew, and then after that, we'll talk to Gem the Jeweler. And we'll be able to get rid of all these red jewels without wasting a lot of time in our inventory. We'll also get a little bit of a, a boost. So, any percent, 100 percent, the categories, they really aren't different up through the next coming dungeon. After that, 100 percent gets a little easier. Yeah, you right get now, the defense boost, and that helps out. Yeah, we'll get a defense boost a little bit later. We have an HP, you evil. Evil NPCs. Oh, that couple I'm love working getting away. here. <laughs> I'm working here. Now I wonder how many people felt bad killing all the monsters in here, only to find out that they're humans. It's true. Everybody we're walking by was monsters right before we put that purification stone in. And here we have an NPC who was brave enough to pickpocket one of the vampires to get the key to this seaside palace 
but leaves it up to us to defeat them. Game logic. Oh, oh. Tricky, tricky. <laughs> I'm telling you, Sai, they're after me tonight. At least you don't have to worry about the one in the coffin room. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Mew. Land of run killers. There are three things in this run that kills any person's attempt. One of them being the boss of this dungeon. Nice, got, the, got both of them. You guys, of course, jinxed my final one. <laughs> You rotten slime. Oh, it denied you. It's all right. We got the speed strats going. Flash or no? Okay. Was rope. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, the correct term for those enemies is flasher. But I've always called them whiz ropes because that's what they remind me of because... They can be jerks like that. Now, luckily, we are going to have a safety save before the boss. I mean, it is a marathon. But... Um, in a normal run, you wouldn't have a safety save. And as you go towards the boss, these whiz robes can still hit you on your way there, even if you're at full health. Because we do have a death warp, which puts us back at full health once we get the second Statue of Hope. We're picking up the first one right here. Uh, so we like to be at full health, but they'll snipe the heck out of you, for sure. Yeah, it's complete RNG as to where they pop up. And they can spawn right on top of you. So Mew is kind of like your water level you would have in any kind of art. RPG or whatever kind of game. Uh, there's different layers to the world map in this. And so once we put this Statue of Hope in here, the water level is going to decrease and we're going to have access to different areas. Oh, that, mm, that whiz robe was kind and didn't spawn right in front of you on your way here. They're freaking me out. I can't even look at the screen half the time. They're freaking me out. And there's four that pop up here. They're the only nice ones. They just say that the sun god Rama, the ocean holds a power. And then, as you can tell, the water level has dropped and it gives us access to new areas. So a little bit of backtracking here. Going to get by these golems. Ooh, that orb was coming for you. Well, it's as I always say, Sai. See the path, not the enemies. Well, that orb saw the path and almost intercepted you. Thanks for always having my back, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, I got you. All right, so... Little bit of a... Uh, way. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> doing a little trick there. Normally, you would need... Free Dan to get that golem to activate and move out of the way so that you can get up that ramp with that bouncy bubble. But there is one spot at the top of that ramp that you can stop Will on, attack that golem, and you can get through. Oh, okay, that was rope was kind. Oh, I had a free dash ready for him just in case. Please me alone. Well, final free dash of the game right here. Thank goodness I didn't miss it. Yep. We're picking up Psycho Slider, the second move. And what Psycho Slider does is, as you're dashing, if you do an attack input, you, as the name implies, you slide and you attack enemies. This also removes our ability to free dash because we can no longer do a normal attack as we're running. The Psycho Slider also helps us to access certain areas in this dungeon. Which you'll see him do once after the Death Warp and then another instance where he's grabbing the Rama statues. 
needed to access the boss for this dungeon. And you can see he's just running into those snakes. He's intentionally taking damage. To yeah, help. That's what I'm doing, for sure. <laughs> A little bit of the use of guard dash here. Draw it to you while getting closer to it. That might be the swaggiest thing I've ever done, and I didn't even mean to do that. That looked good, too. Oh my gosh. All you clipped that, it was a giant mistake. <laughs> Alright, there's a second Statue of Hope. We didn't kill over. Good to go. Still had plenty of HP. But now it's time to Death Warp. We'll take a bonk from these spikes if I can, and then two bonks. No, oh, you don't equip it here! Oh, he'll never let me hear the end of it. He'll never let me hear the end of it. <laughs> oh, it's over. <laughs> so, depending on what's built into the, the game engine on certain screens, the inventory lags, actually. Uh, when you're coming back out of it. Because it has to reload everything at least once on the screen. And so when you pick up the second statue oak, you don't want to pick you don't want to equip it because you're gonna lag the game when you're coming back out of your inventory. You wanna do it in something like this room, where there's not a lot of real estate and not a lot of things to load in. Alright, we're gonna pick up a red jewel in here. See what this golem does. Be gentle, golem. You were not gentle, you were in my way. Slide here. Puts us closer to the... our first or uh, our first uh, key item to give us access to the boss. Oh, that See, was now this is an instance of when you wouldn't want to get hit because you're not gonna have full HP for the boss. But life goes on. So Let's demonstrate invincibility. It's possible to have invincibility for a single screen if you do an invincible move while opening a chest with a fanfare. So, for this screen, I can't be damaged because I opened it up like that. You can do it with the Psycho Slider, or you can do it with the Jump Attack. And we're gonna do it again for the second Rama statue coming up. He didn't go for the frame perfect slide. Why the heck would I do that? I'm trying to show off how good I am, not how bad I am. <laughs> Alright, so there was a jump attack version. You just need to, while you're in the animation, press up again to open the chest. So now we're invincible for this screen. And we're just going to run back. Useful for an actual run where you're not making a safety save. For this run, eh, whatever. So we're going to go into this dark space, heal up, save the game. And keep your fingers crossed, everybody, because it's going to get scary. The, the biggest run killer coming up. <sighs> Just breathe. Breathe, Solar. Nah, so, we got two vampires. They both have different movement patterns. We have two herbs to guide us through it. Uh, we're going to play it safe, obviously. We're not going to try to go for any crazy strat. These are a run killer. For me, it's the hardest part of the run. Go ahead, equip an herb. Oh, we get the mystic statue ahead of time, which, by the way, that's what we're trying to collect in this game. Six mystic, mystic statues. But for some reason, we still have to fight the boss. Yeah, the vampires are also looking for the mystic statues. It never says quite why, but that's why it... Yeah, we, we get the mystic statue and then... We run into the vampires because, you know, they, they kind of want in on that. Here we go. I've got a good slide. Hello, friend.
96, that's a good time. I'm alive! <laughs> I'm alive, people! We're alive, we gotta run! Alright, yeah. Cool, calm, collected. Here we go. Rest of the run. Yeah, those vampires are... Like we were saying earlier, the biggest run killer. The male vampire is completely RNG on where he wants to go. He can he can just go up a space, he can go from one end of the, the room to the other. The female vampire, she always goes in a straight line, but she hits harder. Alright, so, school lesson for everybody. Now's a good time to learn Morse code. So, the basic premise of this game is that there's this comet that's approaching the Earth. And the light from this comet is causing forced evolution on all the creatures on the planet. Seth is going to begin communicating with us. He was swallowed by Riverson, his body's taken the form of Riversons now. And he's going to teach us all this right here. But, uh, it's just kind of a lot of mashing right now, so if we have any donations, now would be a perfect time. Yeah, first, congrats on beating that vampire, it was a great fight. <laughs> Thank you. And we have a $20 donation from Doza saying, Sola hype, and I agree, let's get some hype for Sola! Oh, Dozer. My man. Alright, so he says you gotta figure this riddle. It deals with the comet and the ruins. Fast text and we're out. And now finally, we can talk to Jem the Jeweler and offload some stuff. But not before what, Sai? Oh, uh, there's a red jewel that we need to collect. And it's... Not in a, you know, a spot that you would think that there would be a red jewel. I and totally missed it in one of my practice attempts. <laughs> Alright, run still on. Yeah, yeah, that little fountain there somehow has a red jewel in it. And you would never think to really look there. Alright, All right, so all that was talking to Jem. He gave us rewards for everything that we'd already sent to him. And then we gave him all the red jewels and he gave us more rewards. So here's Angel Dungeon. Um, not too bad of a dungeon. We aren't going to really get a heal between here and the next main dungeon, the Great Wall, so we're going to try to maintain as much HP as we can. Not going to lie, I just have the rando in my mind. Don't like it. Oh, you greedy, greedy fool. And he even gave you the health drop, too. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, Angel Dungeon, it's pretty straightforward. You have a couple of spots like you just saw. Had to inspect the wall for the door to appear. Solar, please stop being bad. Alright, we're through. Let's pick up a red jewel. Usual case. Now, if now, you were concerned with health, this room right here, just it just has two enemies. But if you kill them both, it gives you a health upgrade. So if you had gotten pretty low in health, you could kill those two and refill your health. Or you could now, just hope you get lucky and get some health upgrades right here, or some health drops right here. Thank you for being a bro, Mr. Gargoyle statue. All right, so quick game of spot the difference. We're gonna have four puzzles. Can you spot the difference between the rooms? Play along at home. Just remember it's not the rando. Yeah. Take it in. What's the difference? 3% of you just got that wrong. Do not forget the 
pick up this red jewel. Okay, we're cool. Run is still on. Final difference, everybody. Bonus points for getting it right. That's right, it's us. The wind's blowing our hair. Okay, so. The general idea behind this. Ishtar the painter. The room we didn't go into yet. We'll see that Kara was missing. She's actually been turned into a painting. So we went through this dungeon to rescue her. We just got the magic dust. He himself turned into a painting. But with this magic dust, we can rescue Kara. It's one way to make a selfie. Thinking. Oh, you didn't go for the awkward hug. What? <laughs> oh, I mean, you kind of did. And that's Angel Village. So we're going to make this long trek to Water Mia now. Uh, do a couple things there to progress the story, and then we'll be heading to the Great Wall of China. And this is the fourth main dungeon in the game. So, with everybody watching, the next boss is Sandfanger. Sunfinger to others. Go ahead and place your bets. How many egg cycles, and we'll talk about the different cycles you can get, but how many egg cycles out of a maximum of five do you think we're going to see? I'm going to say three and a half. You're going to say three and a half? I'm going to hope for at least two. <laughs> Just give me two, game. For the marathon, please. So, we'll talk about the boss now since we got some downtime. Uh, he has three cycles. He has a horizontal jumping across the screen cycle. He's got a vertical cycle. And he also has what we call an egg cycle where he just kind of pops his head out of the ground. And is st he's, like, he's stable for a little bit for you to be able to hit him. You can get a maximum of eight hits off when he does that. And that's your greatest chance to do damage to him. So the more that happens, the better. Now, that was Lance's father. He's lost his mind. He was also at the Tower of Babel with you and your father. It's just kind of giving you a little more lore into the story. Giving Will an idea of what's been going on and what's happening. But with that said, we're seeing this budding teenage romance between Lance and Lily. How sweet. I know it's short notice, but do we have any uh, donations to read off? Actually, I'd like to plug some of our great bit wars, especially sure. the one for Pokemon Blue Any Percent No Safe Corruption, where you can choose the starter and you can choose between Bulbasaur and Charmander. And of course, everybody knows Charmander is the superior choice because <laughs> it's Charmander. <laughs> But I got some little inside information that the runner currently has no muscle memory for the Bulbasaur route. So it might be very interesting to see him cope with that. And Bulbasaur is only $13 behind Charmander. So maybe get your donations in to spice that run up a little bit. Yeah, you really put that runner on the spot there. <laughs> All right, well, this is the Great Wall of China. You can see there are some interesting enemies here. And you saw him run through. Oh, this one decided to uh, not agree with you. I'm going to lose my mind. Get out of my face. But you'll see he'll face upward and attack. And what that does is it puts iframes on that enemy, uh, a samurai. And allows Will to, to run through. We can't free dash anymore. We can stop right in front of that enemy. Attack up, either up or down. To keep it from being bounced around. And then run through it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. 
That was one way to do that. <laughs> Sly, I gotta go back around him. What do I do? Slide. <laughs> All right, because I'm at the health I'm at. Uh, usually we run through this guy because we don't care. I'm gonna keep this health just to be safe for the marathon. What? Wow, I've right, never so seen that happen. That was kind of weird. Cool. New uh, new things popping up during the marathon. Oh gosh. All right, so here's Lily. Lily. She's been searching for Lance as well. She's going to uh, join us in her pocket again, and then we have our next sequence break right here. So if you buffer B, you can do a psycho slider and break that ramp sequence, allowing us to get in here a little early to get Freedan because we need him to defeat an enemy that's pretty far out of reach from Will. Oh, Solar, it's a marathon. It's okay, it's a marathon. Heal. We have we'll a wall. Letter again. <laughs> At least you didn't get the you're not equipped text box. This was arguably way worse. <laughs> yeah. And this dungeon also gives us Will's final ability. Which is what we are working towards right now. But first we're going to break a barrier before we get it. Yeah, so jumping down there, you'll find a dark space that has the uh, spin dash. And the game expects you to grab that, then go backwards through the dungeon to get free to end. To kill that enemy. And then progress through. But it's a little faster to just kind of come back to this dark space. That enemy is There's so easier to, to kill. Oh, yeah, yeah, compared to any percent. Yeah, we have an upgraded Dark Friar right now. It will get an additional upgrade a little bit later on. And one little movement tech, I don't think we mentioned this yet. Uh, depending on my position when I get a move, I can charge a Psycho Dash and release it, and it'll actually move me a couple spots closer to the door. Very minimal time save, but you'll see the runners do it just so they can get whatever they can from the game. Yeah, I think it's a, a half tile that you get pushed. Now you'll notice, you know, our strength keeps going up, but the amount of damage that we do to bosses never changes. It's a fixed damage depending on the character that you are. So for Will, the bosses do you only do one HP of damage. Freedan is always gonna be two HP of damage. And then Shadow, who we will see later on in the game, is three HP of damage. Alright, I hope you all got your guesses in. We're about to see Sandfanger. Alright, so like I said, you've got three different patterns. I can somewhat manipulate it by my position. He will have a greater tendency for horizontal if I stand here. Starting off with an egg. All right, so that vertical pattern is what you don't want to see. It's the slowest of the three. So at this position, he has a 50% chance to do the horizontal, 25% chance to do vertical, and 25% to do an egg cycle. I can't manipulate the egg cycle, but I can manipulate more horizontal than vertical. And he's being very naughty right now. <laughs> yeah, starting off with an egg cycle, we knew there had to be something going on. Oh, and then another one. You're teasing me. Woof, come on. All right, there's two. Oh. 
Oh, Fanger, why you do me like this? Alright, we'll count that as three egg cycles. For our little community thing we've got going on. <laughs> three egg cycles. But that's Sandfanger, fourth Mystic Statue. And now we have the uh, the game's longest cutscene? Second longest? Yeah, I think Euro is still just slightly longer. Euro. Well, in any case, it's soon again, but if there's anything to read off, now would be a great time. Sure. And I think I need something of a drum roll here. Can you guys help me out? We have a $100 donation from Woo! Wystone saying, oh, While I was born wise, I've learned to never take my mind for granted, though seeing family members suffer from Alzheimer's. Thank you for participating in this marathon, Wise and Amy. Thank you very, very much for your generous donation. Incredibly generous, you too. Thank you. Yes, thank you, you too. So right here, we're just seeing the continuation of the uh, budding romance between Lance and Lily. Oh, uh, this dialogue. <laughs> Alright, so next town we have to go to is Euro. And to get to Euro, we need some sort of transportation across the desert. And obviously, in video game speak, that means we have to play Russian Roulette. So, I mean, I've been sprinting a lot in this run. I'm gonna give my hands a little bit of a break, go ahead and walk around here, pick up this red jewel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, a raft that's all the way on the upper right that we need to get onto. But we need this leaf, and this leaf doesn't get here until just right now. So, we can take our time. There's no super rush right here. Remember, not the far right. Not the far right? I mean, it never changes. Of course you never choose the far right one. But yeah. it would take the far right one. Oh. Yeah, if you inspect that far right glass, Will will actually tell you that it has a dark aura about it. And it's the one that has the poison. So yeah, that's not randomized at all in the game, and it will, uh, even if you accidentally press it, you have a chance to get out of it. Yeah, it'll, after after Will does his inspection, it'll say, are you really sure you want to drink this one? And if so, you say I'm, yes, it will send you back to the house. <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, that guy passed away, but in his will, he left his crux to us, which is the... Uh, what Illusion of Guy calls horses. So we're off the Euro here. Pay special attention to poor young Eric riding the crook. He's having a time. You got Kara riding side saddle. And then a nice little cutscene going on for, uh, for Euro. So again, if we have time for maybe mentioning the uh, Alzheimer Fondant, it'd be a great time. Oh, sure, I can help you with that. So, we are raising money for Alzheimer Fonden, the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. And Alzheimer has no current cure, but treatments for symptoms are available and research continues. Although current treatments cannot stop Alzheimer's from progressing, they can temporarily slow down the worsening of dementia symptoms and improve quality of life for those with Alzheimer's and their caregivers. The goal of Alzheimer Fund is to be an important research financier in this work. In the absence of eff effective medicines, it is important to research the best preventive measures for Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a progressive disease where dementia symptoms gradually worsen over several years. In its early stages, memory loss is mild. But with late-stage Alzheimer's, individuals lose the ability to carry on a conversation and respond to their environment. 
So basically it's a fight against time and every dollar of your donation helps to find a cure for this. So thank you very much for your generous donations and please keep them coming. All right, well, we are in Euro. Right now we're doing a little bit of a fetch quest. Yeah, I call it that. The, yeah, the maid here is requesting apples. And uh, she won't be happy until she gets three of them. So we're going to pick up the third one right now, but we're going to hang on to it because it'd be slower to turn that in right now. We're buying her silence with apples. Yes. I'm going to pick up a red jewel right there. Then going to go talk to these two who are... Uh, they're debating the dungeon that we're getting ready to go to. Which, you know, is everyone's favorite dungeon, but oh yes, this is 100%, so we do have to go back to Watermia. There is one thing that we left there we have to go back for, and you can't get it until after you've left. Now, we routed it, so there's there's two red jewels we're going to pick up, but that's just how we routed it. Uh, you could pick up the one that's in the casino at any point you're in Watermia. <laughs> But what's also another good opportunity to talk to Jem to get our inventory cleared out. Yeah, the one he just got from Lance, you can't get until you come back. Again, something else that, you know, you wouldn't think to do. And uh, another missable jewel, not permanently missable, just one that you, you know, would never get. Catch how many red jewels that's... Uh... <laughs> I did not. You went through the text too quick. I'm sure it said 32. I mean, you... Yeah, you we're got fine. the one in Angel Village, so you're good. Alright, so to get to Mount Crest, the next mini dungeon, go back to Euro, back out the Crest. And for the speed run, this is where... So... It's speaking in terms of any percent, every destination you press down to choose, except for the final three. The final three are to the right. And this is the same kind of case where we're going to be pressing right to go to a destination. You have to remember that for the speed run. So Mount Crest is a technical dungeon just for running through enemies and not taking a lot of damage. We are super beefed up right now from that Sandfanger kill. And nothing really hurts us. Plus, we talked to Jim, the jeweler. So we have an extra defense jewel now. Um, so we're actually going to try to take damage if we see the fairy enemies. Spider will only do one HP, board. so... Mid we tried to not take damage from them because all it does is just slow us down. Yeah. It's just much quicker to uh, death warp, regardless of your HP, from the fairy at the end of the dungeon. All right, so another little showcase of the invincibility glitch. We did a jump attack. This chest has a fanfare. We're invincible for this screen. One thing I didn't mention before is you can actually cancel the invincibility if I do another jump attack or I start to charge a move. Which we're not going to do. So, for this dungeon... To progress, you need mushroom drops. The mushroom drops allow you to move forward. There's three in this dungeon. Well, that was me. Spider denied you the... The little dash there. Yeah. So I've been hit twice, and that's all the damage I've taken. It's not really scary. The hardest part about this when you're starting out is getting lost, for sure. And yeah, you'll notice he's using Spin Dash right now to move a lot faster than he normally would if he was just sprinting. You'll see that in a couple of areas. One being here, another instance being in Angkor Wat. Let's see if we get through this spider. Rotten spider. Oh, you're all just being mean tonight! RNG is not being kind. They keep turning around on me. It's all right. Okay. 
this room right here, we're also going to be getting invincibility. We're also going to hope that the enemies don't group up to where we generate a lot of lag. This is the first screen in the game where you can actually lag pretty hard. So, most of the time you're going to see four fairies coming across the screen when we're running back to the right. Um, they can group up in pairs, they can come all together. We'll see what the lag's like. Alright, a little bit of a hitch there, not too bad though. Yeah, that was pretty good actually. You can get super unlucky and have five fairies sometimes and that super hardcore lags the game. Oh, uh, the game does not like that one bit. I made it through that spider. Well, at least I got through that one, although I didn't keep my sprint. Speaking of lag, we'll see you soon, spiders. Yeah, the way this game handles sprite loading is unique, <laughs> we'll say. And what he was talking about with you know, the lag and those spiders. You now the spiders all, will spit acid and they can shoot a web to go across. Well, the acid and the web are, of course, considered different sprites. So with all the spiders grouping up and plus they'll be doing... Well, that was a thing. Trust be just a little too late there. Life goes on. Alright, welcome to the lag. Wow. Hmm. Not the worst, but certainly not. No, no. <laughs> if enough is going on and enough spit something or shoot their web out, they'll actually despawn right on screen. Yeah, it goes into a sprite overload and the game just sends them into the void. All right, let's see if we can get one final jump off this chest. Feels so good. Got it. Dang, just a little bit of time. Coming back down. Oh, so that's another move mechanic I can talk about. So there's two kinds of sprinting. It's so the double tap, the sprint, and when you change directions, it's hard to tell, but you'll uh, you'll drift a little bit before you can change directions. Oh, we get the solar CRNG. We got the corner piece um, off of that vine, too. There's also the triple dash. And if you triple dash, so you double tap, and then if you release and hit the same direction again, like maybe accidentally or if you do it on purpose, when you try to change directions, you'll actually stop immediately. And that's useful in certain situations. Okay, Euro. We're gonna go out of our way for just a couple seconds and we're gonna pick up an extra strength jewel. Makes the uh, next few dungeons not too bad. This guy gives it to us. How many of you casual players never knew that that er little room existed? Pick up another red jewel in here. Casually walk out because why not? Yeah, sometimes you just gotta take a stroll. And we're finally gonna drop this apple off. And now the reason he picks up that strength jewel the for one, it's just right along the way. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Plus, it makes the next dungeon a little bit easier. Now, for whatever reason, when you turn that apple in, uh, the game despawns your selection. So, in your inventory. So, we didn't actually equip the teapot until just now. So we went to Mount Crest, we get the teapot. That reveals the true form of Neil's parents who actually aren't alive anymore. This game is super dark. I'm sorry for all the younger viewers. <laughs> yeah, but as col colorful as this game is, if you take the time to read everything, yeah, it's fairly dark. But in the darkness, there is a light. A light that shines so brightly. No, it's not coming off the top of my head. I am, in fact, talking about Hamlet. Following us all the way through our journey, shipped over to here from Water Mia from Lance and Lily, Hamlet has returned. In all the Hamlet glory. True hero of the story. 
the true hero. Some of those dungeons were sketchy. I think we got it under control now. We got Hamlet. Look at that little pig walking. How can you not just love Hamlet, right? Alright, Natus Village, I will leave this to you. So, we got a little more lore in here. The the people of this village are famished, starving, and we show up and appear as food to them, of course. Tinge of cannibalism. Darker themes, yada yada. So we're sleeping in this hut, we're taking a break. They come in, tie us up. Apparently a little violent. <laughs> but here we are tied up. Dancing around the fire. Hamlet looking at care. Careful, Hamlet, careful. Look, look, Hamlet. Look, Hamlet Jr., it's Hamlet. Oh, look away, Hamlet Jr. And to see this happen, it just... It makes you sick to your stomach. Like, I'm physically... I, I'm sick to my stomach, and I just... I just don't know what I'm going to do about it. That's some good bacon. There are going to be people bacon. in chat who are going to have words with you later. Ah, do we have any donations to read off right now? Oh, wow. How could you do that? <laughs> Poor Hamlet. Yes, we do have a donation. It's a $10 donation from Gary Glitter 254 saying Sola is going to eat Gaia. Go get them, John. And hi, Miss Ellen. So thank you very much for that donation. And please, can we get some love for Hamlet and Chad? <laughs> Uh, hi, Mama. All right. Wall bugs. A pain in most runs, but with these strength upgrades, not too bad. Also, this spot right here is the only spot in the game where you don't have to do an animation cancel. It automatically opens up once you kill that one enemy. Take a nice little stroll through some scarab beetles here. And a quick little up the stairs that aren't there. That bug is the only one that is programmed to be a little weaker than the rest. Yeah. So a lot of the tests you see me pass by are just herbs for the game. Um, some aren't too bad to get. They're not that far out of your way. About a seven second time loss for some of them. And here we have the garden. The bane of every runner. <laughs> the Cambodian jungle flies. Completely random movement. Nothing we can do about it. You just hope they go off screen or you get lucky. Alright, we need Freedam because we're going to perform Earthquaker Skip. So, this dungeon actually has Freedam's final move. His second move was in Mount Crest, but ain't nobody trying to talk about that move. You better hope she's not watching. In any case, Earthquaker, when you jump off a ledge, you press B, he slams his sword into the ground, and it stuns any enemies on the screen. But, much like everything else, ain't nobody got time for that. So we just position ourselves to not trigger that invincible enemy. And kill him with a beefed up Dark Friar. And 8%, it takes 3 hits to do that because you don't have an upgraded Dark Friar. We set our checkpoint here. The dungeons in the game have checkpoints. Most of them are right before a boss fight. This dungeon is special because it has several within the dungeon. 
So we set that checkpoint because it'll be faster to move around with Will. We pick up this red jewel. And then death warp. So we're back into Will. And we can progress through the dungeon. And now normally if you play this casually, you'll be collecting dark jewels. Which will give you what the basically are retries. And if you have any, you'll start at half health, and I, and you, know, you won't do the a, a transformation back into Will. But since we never collect any, we just we get put back to full health, and it doesn't matter if we're Freedan or Shadow when we die, you go back to being Will. All right, now another sequence break right here. That was not the shine off my head blinding you. That room was actually that bright. Uh, you need the, the black glasses, but we're not going to go pick those up. You can memorize the room perfectly fine. We go out of our way to pick up this red jewel. I said, now we're just making our way towards the top of Angkor Wat. Nothing really going on here, just moving past some enemies. Now at 80% we actually death warp after we get to the top. We're not going to do that in 100%. We still have one more red jewel to pick up in here. And I need to leave the dungeon because of the, uh, the checkpoint that we set. So if I death warp now, I'm not actually going to be at the beginning of the dungeon. I'm going to be at the last checkpoint. So I'm going to try not to take any damage because with no death warp, the more damage we have on us, the longer it's going to take for Gaia to heal us in the dark space that we're going to go into in the pyramid. So yeah, that... uh. That kind of cinema you saw right there was a zoomed in version of what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like large city structures, large buildings, but because we do this glitch, not glitch, but tech, on the world map when we go into an area and hold start, it zooms it in. All right, so we come back out here. Go ahead and drop down. Pick up the final jewel in, in Anchor Watt. And now the fun begins. And now the backtrack. So we gotta go back through the garden. We're gonna be taking a different path. Doesn't mean it's any easier. I'm it. If I die along harder. the way, I'm gonna be warped right back to uh, that other room I just came out of. So fingers crossed I don't. Getting hit there, not ideal. But we'll see what happens. Lies be kind. Why well, wasn't kind? It's all right. Because Sai, we just have to see the path and not the enemies. And everything is perfectly fine. Okay, one more animation cancel. And normally we'll try to... If we have to equip an item, we'll try to do it during an... an orb cancel glitch. Just to minimize the amount of time we have to go in and out of our inventory. I think I'm missing a red jewel. You think so? I think I am. What in the world would I have missed? Well, we're gonna go talk to Jim the jeweler. We're gonna see what we have. If we have 41, we're good to go. If we have 40. That's bad. I do have a save state, so that's perfectly fine. It's just trying to think of what I would have missed. Oh, well. 
Let's check. No, oh, we're good. Why the heck? When you get used to running this game, you uh, you get used to where items are in your inventory, and the Gorgon Flower was in a weird spot. Question for another time. Welcome to the pyramid. A lot goes on here. Longest dungeon. We meet Shadow, our final form. We get the Aura, which allows us to use Shadow's ability to seep through the ground. Shadow is born from the light of the comet that is. Yeah. Been affecting the Earth in very strange ways. Imagine a world where I run out of the dark space accidentally. <laughs> Before turning into Shadow. Oh, that'd be something. Okay. There are a lot of treasures to find in here. There's also a lot of items we're going to get. Now, I use both herbs on the vamps so i think i just need to use one red jewel at some point in here all right pyramid let's go so shadow got that long swing he's just as useful as freedan for that he does do one extra damage though compared to freedan you hit y to use the aura you go through floors that have bricks like that laid out and for enemies, which we'll show off in the next room, you can do something called the Aura Glitch, which is attacking and then canceling your attack with Aura. And what that does is it applies a continual attack while you're seeping through the ground. And, I mean, there's no enemies in the walls, but if an enemy stands over you while you're doing that and you're not actually seeping down somewhere they'll take continuous damage as fast as their invincibility frames allow them to. And it's useful both for our protection and to kill enemies quickly. Because we can't take damage from enemies while they have invincibility frames going on. Room three. Room three. So, this uh, is the worst room in the pyramid. Probably the worst room in the game, actually. It houses the Killer Six. In this game, as I said, there are three things. The vampires, the boss of this dungeon, which is Mummy Queen, and of course, the Killer Six. And the Killer Six are six of these blue orbs staggered diagonally in a very narrow corridor, and it's rough on runners, for sure. Imagine a world where you don't actually step on the switch. I'm so ashamed of myself. In any case, the the basic means is to iframe dash through one of them, get into a safe spot amongst them, and then just swing away so you can hopefully kill them before they kill you. There's a few ways you can set it up. So you see like that, I'm running through that enemy but I'm not taking any damage from it because I'm attacking it and it's got invincibility frames going on. So we use that to still step on the switch and not have to deal with killing it. But yeah, like I said, we got one more switch to hit and then we're gonna meet the killer six. Now, it's a, uh, it's very stressful on the mind. So I need complete silence with this. I need to focus and Valhalla! And it's just that simple. Sigh, I'm alive. I can't believe you did that in the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's perfectly fine. So. Six rooms in the pyramid. Two of which you do with Shadow. We went to the first one. We picked up a red jewel. It was quicker to warp out. Then we get room three out of the way. We're going back in the room five now. 
We're going to pick up another hieroglyph, and then we're going to death warp out. And the other four rooms we're going to do with Will. You know, it, something to note here is there used to be three rooms with Shadow, three rooms with Will. However, it was found here recently that room two could be done with Will. And we'll get to show that off. So, Shout outs to Don't Bag You Me for uh, checking it out in Gaia the Creator maps, finding what Sai's talking about out. RNG. Cool. So, yeah, I'm not completely safe yet. You might think my health is okay, but when you are a down like this, you're relying on the RNG of those bird, bird soldiers to not be in a position to where they kill you oh, during a marathon. Thank you. Oh, you get the pixel. <laughs> um, like this guy. Like, I was lucky right there that the R glitch hit him and I didn't take damage. So all that's left is to jump down here, iframe dash through these two bird soldiers, grab this hieroglyph, and then we'll death warp out. Easy every time. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, the run used to be, especially any percent, because any percent at this point you're super squishy. It used to be scary because you'd have to do room three, room two, and then room five, all with shadow. And basically in any percent, you only had one extra herb from Angel Village if you, uh, if you didn't keep any from the vampires. So yeah. fun little thing I'm gonna show off in this room on the last one. Uh, the there's these doorways hidden behind the mummies. You can actually run through there and not take damage as they're spawning. And I'll show that off here. Just kind of neat to see. Like that. So all these rooms we're going to death warp out of. Because there's no checkpoints outside at the beginning of the room. So it's just quicker to do that than run all the way back. And we're going to go in order. Six, four, two, and one. Except we're going to stop in three, sorry, six, four, three, two, and one. We need to pick up a red jewel that was in room three that only Will can access. The pyramid really is a maze because it makes you think you need all three characters and their abilities to progress. But in actuality, you're not going to see Friedan anymore for the rest of the run. Now, room three can be done as Friedan, but it's slow. Can we get the Freed strat? Get the Freet Strat. And you can actually manipulate those orbs to all stay at the, at the top of that wall. It used to be we would slide through them, take a little damage boost, and then hit the ramp. But a runner by the name of Mr. Freet found that you can have them all stop at the very top, and you can just run right underneath them. So you've got this really interesting room where the uh, spikes are coming down from the ceiling. It's weird because even when they're completely down, they don't block you as long as you're invincible. Like when you're in the spin dash animation. See a little bit of that here, I think. Yeah, right here where you started. All right, stopped one short. Still should be fine. Another hieroglyph. I want you all in chat to know it has been so difficult not to tap my controller or hum this entire time. It's this everything the soundtrack and everything is so catchy about this game. You gotta love it. But I'm getting I'm getting wrapped up in everything. If we have any donations, now would be a great time to read them. Actually, this run has me so hooked and I had so many great donations to read that I totally forget to tell about prizes. You can win prizes by donating, isn't that great? And you can win a ViewSonic Elite monitor if you donate 30 bucks or more during the entire marathon. So if you already donated 10 bucks or 12, you only need to match that up to the amount of 30 and you're in for the drawing. 
And we also have another prize, a Nintendo Switch by our lovely sponsor Kaspersky, which you can get with a minimum bid of $50. So you can donate, help a good cause, and get an incentive you want met, for example, the bonus run of Super Mario 64, which everyone loves, and you can win prizes. Isn't that great? It is, it is. Thank you, thank you. So what we're showing here is something that was kind of hidden for a very long time from the community. These floors actually collapse. Yeah, I so wonder how many people in place... chat just had their mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I mean, it was hidden from a lot of people, and Don't Bagu Me found it when he was working on the randomizer, looking at the maps. That's right, people. There's an illusion of guy randomizer. IOGR.app. IOGR.app. Shameless plug. And found that, and so we've cut 11 to 14 seconds off the speed run, just because we have that now. That you used to do this room with Shadow, and now you don't have to. Alright, final room. Getting rid of a red jewel so I can pick up the hieroglyph. My inventory is weird right now. And this is the easiest room in the pyramid. Just spin dash through everything. Making our way towards the bottom. Now, we won't yeah, be death warping after we grab this hieroglyph. Right. I don't want to get hit because this is going to be my health for the Mummy Queen. Unless it's super bad and then I'll heal, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. So, yeah, like Sai said earlier in the run, any upgrades we miss, the main bosses that we fight, catch us up. We get all those upgrades. But it's been a while since we fought a boss. The last boss we fought was Sandfanger. So we're squishy right now. And also, we've been forgetting about somebody. Somebody that we only heard about at the beginning of the game. The Jackal. Still say that was a missed opportunity on their part. Could have done so much with it. Yes, the Jackal has caught up with us. He has taken Kara hostage. And we're just going to play him a little melody. I mean, it's a pyramid. There's booby traps, right? So yeah, while that's playing, real quick, uh, just to know about the Mummy Queen, I take two hits without using an herb, I'm dead. She hits like a truck. Hamlet 2.0, anyone? Again, darker themes and such. Alright, so Kara is getting over her crisis. We're going to put the uh, the hieroglyphs in here, and when we put them in the correct order, they're going to unlock the portal to Mummy Queen. Alright, now all we got to do is get around these orbs without taking damage. So we're gonna use Shadow, obviously. Shadow's gonna do three damage against the boss. I mean, you could fight her as well. Yeah, I could show off, but you know, the estimate's gonna be kinda tight. I don't wanna do mess with the marathon, so I'm sorry everybody, but we won't show Will off fighting the Mummy Queen. It's for the best, it's for the best. Don't you ever do that to me again. <laughs> now, in the Japanese version, <clears throat> You can stun lock Mummy Queen with Freedan if you have Earthquaker. Can't do oh, that. Beautiful woman, you came down. Thank you. Okay, we got a good start. 
So yeah, this is going to be the first half of the fight. Just going back and forth as she spins out like this. Now she'll do one of three things. She'll either come back together and move, come back together and do that, which is dropping a bunch of rocks on her head, which we don't want to happen. Or she'll shoot a giant energy ball at us. She was about to do that right there. And then once her half her life gets below half, she'll switch to phase two. And that's when the RNG really kicks in. We're going to hope for what we call ring cycles. Uh, they're quicker to deal with. And we don't want her doing any of the, uh, the stone cycles. Because she'll spread apart and have to come back together like this. It's time consuming. She's seeming very unforgiving right now. But here we go. Phase two. So in this ring, there's one... Oh, you evil, evil woman. There's one spirit out of that ring that's real. And we have to hit that. I mean, we gotta make it a little interesting, right? Yeah, I mean... Gotta, <clears throat> gotta put on a show for the viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One bad cycle. No, yeah, we'll bad. take that in a run. Perfect cycles, they're rare in a run. You'll take one. You start to get a little crabby if you see two. Do those long, drawn-out cycles. All right, well, now we have five mystic statues, and our father is telling us to go to the Tower of Babel. But there's we'll supposed that. to be six. So where's this uh, mysterious sixth statue at? Now, of course, it's an RPG, so obligatory boss rush towards the end. Uh, we're going to be doing that, but if there's anything you want to read off, now would be a great time. Alrighty. I have a $5 donation from Neda saying, Spoiler alert, Zola is not European. Thanks for all the runners. Thanks for your donation. And... I have a $50 donation from Neo Matamuna saying, had to give during Solas run. Valhalla! <laughs> Thank you so very much for donating. Uh, appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Thanks for outing me, too. Murica. Alright, so. Neat little thing to show off here. Uh, the game developer is a little lazy. Look, we can charge Psycho Dash as well, floating down in the parachute. But if you know the story, Kara also comes down. But for some reason, Kara also knows how to Psycho Dash. And that's just because they reuse the same sprite right there. And they're linked together. So you hold B to charge like you would with some move for Will. And all the parachutes will flash. Now, casually... Your final red jewel is right there. That's jewel number 50. We skipped a couple in Dal because we're going to go back there anyway. But to get to the secret dungeon, we have to do all of the Tower of Babel. Yeah, we have to go through a boss and then rush. go back. Almost like Capcom had a hand in this game. Alright, where's my crystal ring? That's super annoying. A little off. Ay, 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 what the heck's with my inventory? Hey, we have all the red jewels. That's that's the important part. <laughs> we think. <laughs> well, we'll find out when we get back to Dow. So, we got through that barrier with our crystal ring that was lodged into our flute, which just miraculously got bounced out when we hit that bouncy. Kara got through because she had that all the way back from the Inca Gold ship. So, yeah. Boss rushes now. All the bosses in order. We're going to hope for good RNG. Everybody's kind of beefed up, but we get to fight them as Shadow, so that's to our advantage. Also, if you look at our health and our defense and whatnot, we got everything that we had missed up through Mummy Queen, so we're pretty beefy again. Uh, it would take a lot to, to kill us. The one HP we're missing is in Euro, and it's not required for this category to get by standing in line for over two minutes. Got the okay pattern. <laughs> Followed by a no, I, pattern. I know it's in the marathon, but it was for science. I wanted to see if there was a different spot I could stand in. Because I was going to get hit regardless from that pattern. 
All right, so that's Cast Off 2.0. Shot double the attacks at us. Viper actually isn't too much different. Yeah. Just normal Viper fight. Just We're gonna try a to little bit stronger. Yeah, we'll just try to kill it as fast as possible. Um, you can R glitch if you want to cheese it after he swoops back down one time. Now, I didn't use any herbs in the pyramid, so if I need to, I can heal from them. That was a good fight. Well, that's the fastest fight I've ever had. <laughs> At the cost of getting hit, we'll take that for sure. Two hits left? That's a good Viper fight for sure. Now, when you're running through the game, you gotta remember, even bosses, you go left. Odd bosses, you go right. It's easy to get lost in here because all the corridors look the same. Amps 2.0. Let's hope for some good RNG here. So with the vampires, they now have a hitbox. Before I could run through them and I wouldn't take any damage. Now they'll hit me. So we're going to be showing the aura glitch for sure for protection. But to also deal a lot of rapid fire damage to them. Uh, it's very easy for this boss to whittle us down. Also, fun fact, Shadow can block the projectiles. Alright, that was good. You know what? Works for me. <laughs> we'll take that fight. What you really, really, really hope for are the vampires coming together at some point and getting the double aura off. But that kind of run is only in dreams. All right. Fingers crossed, everybody. Two eggs. Two eggs. We're going to rinse through Sandfanger. Assuming he gives us at least one egg cycle. You evil, evil worm. Why? Space worm, be evil. Aww. Didn't get the third. How dare you hit me. Sai's not gonna give me an egg and I'm gonna get really mad. You awful worm! It really isn't. <laughs> oh, 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 he's testing me. Oh, he's testing me! Oh. <laughs> wow. So, you can see why if this was a legitimate speedrun, which it's not because all of you donated for the Apocalypse Gaia fight, invalidating this being an actual run. How, after going two hours in, to have something slow like that happen is mind-numbingly painful. To not even also, get one egg. The bosses are now going to help us ascend the tower. Well, something else to to note is Viper got changed between the Japanese and the English version. You can see the design he has for the, the English version. In the Japanese version, it's a, a bird. Why they changed it, I'm not too sure. Alright, so Mommy Queen 2.0 is actually a little easier. Not because of the damage we can do, but also because there's no platform right here that blocks us. That... So we have a little more room to wiggle around while she's doing her second phase. And we have a bit more defense. True, yeah. Combat mechanics, this is of course a little easier because we can take more hits. Yeah, other than that, same fight. Run back and forth. Dodge the spirits. Aura when they get close. And then help on the second half that she gives you all ring cycles. Alright, so two more hits and second phase will start. Please stop firing those at me right now. It's very mean. All right, here we go. <sighs> uh, 
Um, she had to do it. You oh. evil thing! <laughs> oh, the double. All right, we're gonna do a quick iframe dash and turn around. Or just get smacked. Solar Sea Wreck. All right, half health. Meh. For you see, this is 100% after all. And we're not going to go fight Dark Gaia. Not yet. We've got one more boss to fight before that. Now here we have another one of the bosses helping us ascend the tower. But before we go see what's going on over there, we're actually going to leave the tower. Uh, that's because we need to pick up the last three red jewels. Hopefully the last three. <laughs> Alright everybody, get your guesses in. How many snakes? It's now snake time. What's your guess, Sai? I'm going to say... 84. 84? What the heck is wrong with you? Alright, fine. 96. <laughs> Now, what would be super embarrassing, because I'm doing this, I'm attack canceling back and forth to hit these as fast, relatively as fast as you can. But that's hitting left and right very quickly. And from playing this game so much, your D-pad gets worn down easily. Uh, so... It's very possible I could jump attack out of the room and have to start all over again. Now, I don't think any of you would laugh at me if that happened, right? Yeah, not that it's ever happened though, right? No, no, of course not. It's just a possibility. Oh my gosh, don't do it. 60 seconds, where are you not done yet? 98! Alright, so he's gonna give us our final two red jewels, send them to the jeweler. Sucker, if you please. If there's anything to read, now would be the time. Okay. We are raising money for Alzheimer's Fonden. Alzheimer's Fonden is the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Alzheimer's Fonden's aim and purpose is to increase fundraising to the benefit of scientific research in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Yearly, Alzheimer's Fonden Science Council and Board of Directors grant scientists and projects around 30 million Swedish kroner. Alzheimer Fund enables training for caregivers on the subject of dementia. Alzheimer Fund organizes projects, camps and events for youngsters affected in different ways due to parents or other relatives diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So every donation that goes towards Alzheimer's Fund is a very, very good deed. It's really a terrific thing. This. We need to fight this disease. It's it. It eats your mind. And um, I had a grandma suffering from dementia, and it was horrible. So I um, know that we need to fight this um, disease. And thank you for all your donations. Really, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So for those of you who played this boss. <sighs> When you were growing up, sorry, it's just a very easy fight. Uh, Mr. Free, bless his heart, decided to ruin game and find this nifty little pixel you could put yourself in. <laughs> and uh, just cheese the heck out of it. So, get wrecked, solid arm. So this is actually the third strat that's been uh, created for solid arm. There, there's the, what we call the slow strat, which is on the conveyor on the far right. And it was just a attack, block, attack, block. The if You could go a certain amount up on the middle conveyor, attack a couple of times before you'd have to block. And you'd eventually get pushed down far enough that you'd have to reposition yourself, attack again, and rinse, lather, repeat. But yes, Mr. Freak being the madman that he is, found that pixel and you can just wail on Solid Arm, making it a trivial oh. fight. We, uh, we're at 209 in right now. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, this is your father, at long last. You mean See, he's not he's, the flute? Uh, 
He wasn't the flute. He is the spirit. He was communicating with us. Now, we're about to go fight Dark Gaia, and then after that, Apocalypse Gaia, because all you were so generous and met that donation incentive. Now, it's important that we go fight him prepared, and some of that preparedness comes from the knowledge of camels. And so, obviously, we need to learn about camels before we go save the world. Yeah, that's important information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, it is... Let me talk a little bit about Dark Guy and Apocalypse Guy. At ESA Winter, I was actually there and I showed off the randomizers Apocalypse Guy. That was on hard mode. But the difference there was that I had five herbs in reserve. And if you die on phase three of the fight, you have a checkpoint there. Or phase three or later, you have a checkpoint at phase three. So it's not that big a deal. But for this... This is a patch you can find online that Raven, who is one of the main programmers for the uh, the Illusion Guy randomizer, found. Apocalypse Gaia is broken code in the vanilla game. And he found that while working with the with Don't Bagu Me on the randomizer and decided to try to piece it together, doing his best to keep the developer's original intent alive. And Sai, myself, a few others, we play tested the heck out of it. It is what it is you're going to see here. It's not a trivial fight when you first see it. You get used to it, but I only have two herbs, and there's no checkpoint right now. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, yeah, this is... Uh, it'll be the normal Dark Eye fight you're used to seeing. And then we'll have three phases of Apocalypse Gaia. Time will be when the main head explodes on the... Uh, the final phase, but I'll, I'll give you fair warning on that. We're going to fly up there now. While I have this opportunity, I just want to say thank you to ESA for giving Sai and I this opportunity to just be a, a participant in helping to raise money for this charity. It is an amazing charity, and all your donations are really appreciated that go towards it. Thank you to Sooker for her donation reading. I've been hearing great things all week when she's been doing donations from the people that have been watching. Uh, yeah, just wanted to get that little outro out there. I appreciate being able to work with the ESA on this. So yes, we've come to Dark Gaia. My favorite boss music in the game. Phase one, Comet Face. This is all it is, so we're just gonna be either dodging these or using R to be safe because it's a marathon. This one is pretty standard, you know, you have to wait to attack it once, it shoots off some plasma rain, you run around, attack again, and just another just rinse, lather, and repeat boss. And then comes Dark Gaia, her true form. So, for this fight in a speed run, you hope for three cycles. If you can do five hits, five hits, and four hits, you'll three cycle her. That was four hits. I am incredibly upset at the world, but we'll see. Unless you get hit out of the way, you're either gonna get a four cycle fight or a three cycle fight. The gimmick here is just keep attacking until she opens her mouth. You know when she is, it's just nice to stay in the rhythm because it's a pain in the butt to keep rhythm. Alright, there's a five. That was good. Because it's just slower than the beat and tempo of the music. So you can't let that throw you off. Come on. Open that mouth. Alright, so that's Dark Gaia. Welcome to Apocalypse Gaia. Phase three, we're gonna have two heads that shoot homing attacks at us, I don't even know what you call them, plus these more aggressive red bubbles. So we're gonna get what damage we can in. It's random what head becomes vulnerable first. So we'll get a lot of hits or not too many as we go. All 
Alright, so this right one has one more hit. R to be safe from that. There's nothing you can really protect yourself from as far as those uh, red attacks without Aura. All right, and this should be the last little bit of phase three. Here comes phase four. One floating head across the top. Pandemonia <laughs> everywhere else. Stay alive, everybody. Do what you can to stay alive. There is a lot that is going on in this phase. All right. Phase five, here we go. My favorite part, the music speeds up during this. Originally a bug with the program, now a feature. So this central head only takes damage after all these other floating heads are destroyed. And we have a, a random fire red orb that's getting shot out and then this homing orb that's getting shot out. Nasty, nasty thing. So the music is slowly speeding up, and as the fight goes on, it gets faster and faster. The tension's building. What will he do? He'll run into an attack. That's what he'll do. Now, Apocalypse Guy is programmed to avoid you. So, when I go somewhere, he'll usually float towards the top of the screen. And the farther you get into the fight, the more of these floating heads appear. Just for the marathon, I'll, uh, just be safe. One final hit, everybody. Get ready on time. It's when the head explodes. I hope you've all enjoyed this run. I've had a blast. Get your goodbyes inside. I'd like to just, you know... Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to commentate your run for you, and, you know, and of course to ESA. And time. That's Illusion of Gaia. That's Apocalypse Gaia. Thank you so much, everyone. Was a blast for sure. GG Thank Solar. you so much for the run. It was a blast. I had so much fun commentating and seeing you play this game. It was epic. And sadly, you, you. this was my last shift at ESA. I'm uh, very sad, but I'm going to leave you to the very capable hands of Agama for the next run. And hope you all stay a little bit and watch the rest of the marathon. Thank you very much.